Hi friends. I want to say thank you to whoever left the frog jam on my desk this morning. <laughs> that cracks me up. I really appreciate it. Thanks. I have a friend who says, never do math in public. And he usually says it after someone does a simple math problem in the course of a conversation and gets it wrong. I admit he has said it to me before. Now, I used to be really good at math. When I was in elementary school, my handheld video game was called The Little Professor. And it was essentially a calculator that put math problems on the screen and I just typed in the answer. When I was in middle school, I won the Madison County Math B, first place. When I was in high school, I got A's in calculus and physics. Well, although I was good at math, I never really enjoyed it. <laughs> and so once I graduated from high school, the only other math class I ever took was probability and statistics, a requirement for a psych major. My math skills are a little rusty to say the least. But I was thinking about how in mathematics, you can get to the same answer in a variety of ways. For example, three plus seven is 10. Two plus eight is 10. 14 minus four is 10. Five times two is 10. 30 divided by three is 10. All of these math problems lead to the same answer. In a similar way, there are many pathways to reach the answer, the ultimate answer, which is God. For example, some people come to God on the pathway of intellect, studying God's word and God's way. Other people experience God on the relational pathway, conversing and interacting with other people. Some people reach God on the pathway of service, helping others. Some people experience God on the worship pathway, opening their heart in praise and adoration. Others sense God's closeness in activism, actively working for a cause. And some people come to God on the pathway of contemplation, spending a lot of time in quiet solitude. They are all different pathways that lead to the same answer with a capital A, just as multiple math problems lead to the same mathematical answer. One is no more correct than the other, they're just different. And although it's good to know all the facts, that is to participate in all of the pathways, it is also true that different people remember some facts better than others. That is to say, some people experience God more naturally and more powerfully in one or two of the pathways than in others. These pathways are not mutually exclusive, but they work together in powerful ways to reveal God and God's presence and God's work. If you were to identify your primary pathways for knowing and experiencing God, what would they be? Are you engaging in practices that help you feel close to God? Are there some practices that leave you feeling more frustrated and disappointed than close to God? Well, maybe you're trying to add when multiplication is more your speed. <laughs> The point is that knowing and experiencing God is not a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. So explore a variety of pathways, and then walk with joy on the ones that resonate with you and help you most effectively grow in your faith and your discipleship. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again tomorrow.